My old man taught me that duct tape could fix him.
Chained up on the other side. Hey. What can I do? Help yourself? Is this the sort of detail you had in mind when you signed up for the Gunners? Hauling luggage from Lynn Woods for some robot butler? Oh, what was his name? Uh, Wellington? <laughs> Wellingham? Not now, Private. Where's Connors? He's not at his post. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. The, the Lieutenant said he found some tracks. Wanted to check them out. Private Martin. Tracks? What track? What the hell is that? Oh my... Connor! I got it. Where, where's the rest of him? Got it. Major! Major, what found us? Found us. Sergeant Lee, drive the case. Do not let that thing out of your sight. Everyone inside the museum, now! Sure thing. Just... What you said about Nat. I've been going over it again and again in my head, and... What you said was right. Family's too precious. What kind of life is she gonna have if I never go near her again? It's just... Sometimes it feels like the only things I've got in life are Nat and the paper. Having someone I can count on, someone like you, it's meant a lot to me. Not a lot of people want to hang around with the nosy reporter. Yeah, but you're my kind of nosy. <laughs> you're the exception. I haven't exactly made a lot of friends in this career. I just wanted to right the things I thought were wrong. And when Nat and I first got to Diamond City, there was a lot of wrong. Crooked guards, lousy infrastructure. <laughs> there was a hole in the exterior wall that was patched over with a bookcase. One bookcase. That's it. I started the paper more as an act of desperation than anything else. Turned out I wasn't the only one who wanted things to change. 
After the first couple of editions, people may not have agreed with what I said, but everyone was listening. Sounds like you really cleaned up Diamond City. Well, a lot of things got done. They even put a second bookshelf over that hole and patched it with bricks. When that first edition hit the stands, I felt like I'd finally done something worth doing. But afterwards, things, things changed. People didn't want to talk the way they used to. It seemed that overnight I'd gone from being Piper, the friend and confidant, to Piper, the nosy snoop. A lot of folks, they haven't treated me the same since. I started to feel like the only person I could count on was my little sis. You can count on me, Piper. I know I can. You're not afraid of me like everyone else. I was sure that the paper would be the best thing I ever did in my life, but being here with you now, now I don't know. I've needed someone like you in my life for a long time, Blue. I just never expected I'd actually get them. So thank you for being the friend I can count on. It sounds to me like you're interested in becoming more than just friends. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> Well, I'd be lying if I said I never thought about you that way. Not that I'm always thinking that way. It's just... Blue. <laughs> I'm loud and pushy and constantly getting in over my head. Why would someone like you ever want someone like me? You don't need to be flawless, Piper. You're perfect for me. Perfect, huh? <laughs> that's, uh, that's a new one. Well... Hmm. Well, I think you're perfect, too. <laughs> Goodness, Blue, I... I don't know what to say. You're everything I could ever ask for. Come on. Let's not keep the world waiting. User joined your channel. Ew. Hello. What's up? Nothing much. What are you doing? Just getting home from the edge of civilization. The edge of civilization. Nothing happened then. What do you mean? Nothing happened on the edge of civilization. Uh, not today. Nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, boy. You said it was exciting.
I might stop playing Elite again, casually. Why do you want to do that? I just miss the itch, you know? I miss having like a fucking ship game, you know, to improve in and have it be consistent through playthroughs and combat. Let me to put, tell you what will happen. What happened? This is what happened. Stop playing. You'll then get bored. I think I need to avoid what makes me bored like last time I was like so focused on grinding money that all I did was travel you know and do trade between systems which was boring to begin with and watching the fucking loading screens like would just put me to sleep I feel like if I just play a little and try to you know just do the stuff I like like combat and shit like that you know and play in smaller increments and when I feel sick of it just quit instead of like forcing myself to grind yeah, I could get I some more you. enjoyment out of it I guarantee you. this is what will happen you do that and then you get wasted by an engineer ship, NBC says. Mm. I think the same thing will happen. Who could do something mm. like that? Guarantee it. There's just nothing good to play anymore. When I do get a couple hours to play a game, I sit down and I'm like constantly searching for something, you know, and there's like nothing there. That'll pass. That'll pass. You'll find something eventually by the end of it. Guarantee you. Yeah. You'll find something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a game I already played money for. If I can try to get some enjoyment back out of it, it's just a win. It's just like I haven't bothered trying to play because it's like in Elite it takes hours to accomplish everything and it's not the type of game you can sit down with 45 minutes or an hour and, you know, do anything. You know, just outfit and getting your barons going to a combat zone and going back, that's like at least a fucking hour, you know. I'm wondering if I should wipe my account and just start over and not, you know, grind expensive no. ships and shit. Well, it's like, ah, uh, my combat rank, I think's the one under elite, and my ship's yeah, on engineered, so, so like, it puts forward. me up against such difficult opponents, like, I can't even do it, yeah, like you were you saying bored, earlier. Yeah, but when you get bored, then you've lost everything. You know, when you get unbored. Have you tried it with the new computer? I'm not, I'm not, I'm never playing Elite Banks ever again. <laughs> they fucked it up and they know they do. I think it's funny, like, where they're going with the game, like, they're focusing on, like, these new, like, squadrons and the carriers for groups.
maps and shit. And it's like, dude, your game isn't even like a solid, like, multiplayer game. It's like peer-to-peer, -peer. it's iffy at fucking best. Because like, you know, uh, Squadron is just good at chat, and the carrier is, uh, uh all, all it is is a station that the uh, Squadron commander can tell them to move to a system. Yeah. That's it, it's always, you can land, restock, refuel, that's it. Ah, I paid my odds. Uh, are you kidding me? Do you know how the, all the other mods are free that are better than the paid shit? I thought you couldn't get any mods now without joining like the mod workshop and paying a membership. No. no. There's paid mods and there's free mods. Oh, what the fuck? I thought it was all locked behind like a paid subscription. Playing fucking Minecraft here and there. You ever play Minecraft? Never. Oh, it's awesome. Survival mode, it's like insane. It's like an MMO without all the bullshit, you know? Nice being on the move again. Fewer paper cuts than the Excellent. Back home. So, I got a, I've had a tire, an air leak in the front passenger tire of my car all week. I have to get air every morning because it's low. And I took it to a place <laughs> Wednesday on my day off to get it plugged. And there's a nail in the right sidewall of the tire and they can't plug it. It's like a safety thing. I took it to another shop and they told me the same shit. They're like, we can't plug it there. You need to replace it. So, my car has almost 40,000 miles on it now. And the tires that came with her from when it was new. And they're pretty worn. They need replacing in like 10,000 miles. So they wanted to just give me one new tire. And I was like, eh, when I had the red Mazda Speed 3, I was in the same situation. And I put just one new tire on the tire that blew out. And when I changed the other three tires and got new tires for those, the tire that I had put on new by itself blew out because of the disparity between them. And then I got a new tire for that, and then the other ones started to blow out. So this time I'm like, yeah, I'm not going through that. I'm just going to get all new fucking tires. And I'm getting really nice tires, but it's going to cost me $650. But i got to wake up at fucking 7 in the morning to go get that done. Which is annoying, you know, big day off with my daughter and i got to go fucking get no sleep and start it with that. Sit at the fucking shop for like two hours while they do all that shit. I don't even think they have a waiting room. I'm going to be outside on the fucking curb. They stole our damn kids. Christ. Maybe. Maybe if we just return the eggs. Oh, hey, Mama. You looking for this?
So, are there any games you do play that since getting a new computer have like totally been a different experience because of the upgrade? I haven't played it much. Uh, I'd say no, it's just graphical improvements. Things look better. You can run all the bells and whistles at max now. Yep. That's pretty sweet. I mean, I run most shit good, but I can't max it out. I gotta keep it, like, medium, or if I'm lucky and it's a good optimized game, I can get away with hot. Last I heard on the news before I left for work, they were finding like all kinds of pressure cooker bombs and shit like around the school in Texas and the Wait, neighborhoods. Whoa. Yeah, I heard uh, there were like pipe bombs and pressure cooker bombs. Whoever shot up the school had stashed like around and set up. Okay, that was crazy. I know. Serious terrorist organization. <laughs> Just one person, was it? I guess they're in, they have someone else in custody who may be an accomplice. They didn't like physically help shoot anybody, but I guess they provided like material support and planning. It's just you know a speculation right now. What I did hear is that uh, the firearms were taken from the kid's parents were lawfully registered and they were uh, legal firearms for the father. You know, I feel like, you know, in my, it's different in every state, the firearm laws and shit. You figure, you know, they'd regulate it for the whole country, but no, every state, you know, has different shit. But in my state, you have to have a locked enclosure to keep your guns in. If you transport your guns, you have to have some kind of, like, regulated lockbox and shit. And it's like, if your kids can get access to your guns and go kill everybody, you know, maybe the new thing should be firearm security. Like, one, 
every state should have that regulation. You got to keep your shit locked up and secured. And second, the parents or whoever's guns these are should be held accountable if your kid can get access to your shit and kill everybody with it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Like in Texas, they don't have anything like we have in my state. Like in Texas, it's very, uh, you know, guns everywhere. And it's like, you know, a kid has a bad day, goes into his father's closet, grabs his fucking shotgun and revolver, which is what this kid used, goes to school and kills everybody. Like, you know, it should be on the fucking father now to be, hey, you know, you had these guns, your kid had access to them. Uh, it's kind of your fault, you know? Well, One, should... you should have taught your kid better. Two, you should responsibly contain your deadly weapons. Hey, there should be some sort of, uh... I don't want to say punishment, but... Like, it's different in the case where the kid uh, who shot up to Sandy Brook Elementary School killed his mother in her sleep, took her key, and unlocked her guns and used those to kill the kids at the school. Like, obviously, one, not the mother's fault, like, her shit was locked up in accordance with law, and she got murdered. Like, one, you can't, you know, discipline her, she's dead. Two, you know, in a situation like that, like, nothing you can really do. But... If you don't have your guns locked up and your kids can just grab your shit and do this, you know, that's kind of on you now. You know, you should have been a little more responsible. You shouldn't have guns in the house where anyone can access them, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm hearing all this news today and, you know, Congress, people are telling Congress, ban guns, save our children, this and that. It's like, no. The only thing, you know, banning guns and whatever other shit gun control you want to do you're keeping guns away from legal responsible law abiding and respecting citizens who would obey the law to you know register their shit and do everything they have to do that's not the answer because when you take that away now the only thing you've done is take away guns from good responsible law abiding people and the underworld and criminal element is still gonna have guns you know so it's like, you gotta go back to the guns don't kill people, people kill people. Why do kids kill people? And we were talking about that earlier before I went to work, you know, all the pressures and shit of today's children. What I was talking about today with the dude at work is more kids today than ever are on mental health meds, you know, ADHD medication, you know, all this shit. They're pumping kids full of chemicals now. They're trying to treat, you know, behavioral problems with drugs and kids are more fucked up than ever and nobody's really tested none of that shit on a developing adolescent mind at best there have been clinical studies on adults where shit's stabilized and you know after everything I've been through with these drugs and shit and the mental health system I'm not sure it helps and in my case it hurt me in my life way more than it helped so you think of the kids, the pressure, the social media, you know, it never stops. You get home from school, the drama, everything's still going on 24-7. And then you add in all these kids now with all these problems and, you know, all these drugs. And you don't know what kind of fucking effect it's having on a developing mind, a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, you know, parents are shittier. Morals are slipping down the tubes like... Things are getting worse and worse in society. You know, worse and worse people are breeding faster and faster than good people. And a lot of shitbags have kids these days, and now they're growing up, and they're not good parents. You know? I see it every day, like what the new generation is looking like. What's that thing I saw the other day where they, that woman had fucking 13 kids, and the, the father was like a devil worshiper, saying that they took, there was shit on the floor and stuff. And, you know, my state, in America, I don't know what it's like, you know, in England, uh, you get a tax credit for every child you claim. It's called a dependent claim. Like, as a parent, one of you can claim the children. Every child you have is a dependent, and you claim them on your taxes. So, like, when I claim my taxes, I claim zero, and Erin claims one dependent for our daughter. She gets the tax credit. We get fi about $5,000 back in taxes a year for having a kid now in a lot of places in the country 
as many kids as you have, you're getting a fucking tax credit for that $5,000 credit. And in mass, they finally capped it at four. So you could have a hundred kids. You're only getting a max tax credit of four kids. Like a lot of welfare cases will go out and have single mothers fuck five, four or five different dudes have four or five different kids so they can claim and get maximum benefit. You know, you'll get $20,000 tax break for having four kids. And then every kid you have, you qualify for more and more food stamps, more and more for your allotted free housing and shit like that. So at least in my state, they put a cap on it. But like you're saying, in a lot of places, people will have as many kids as they can to keep that fucking tax thing going, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know people who have four kids and they get, they don't even end up paying taxes because they get back like $15,000 at the end of the year, you know what I mean? And they live rich. They drive nicer cars than I'll ever own. They live in fucking houses. They have free insurance, free food. And it's just like... Society needs to give people incentive to go out there and bust your ass. Thank you. You know? Thank you. The people who work cr help create a safety net and carry people who can't. A lot of people are in trouble, need help. Yeah, that's good. We can have that safety net. But there's a whole class of people who exist now to abuse it, to do yeah. nothing and live an easy life. And it's like, you know... The workers are becoming less, we're taxing them more to carry ever-increasing amounts, you know, immigrants coming in, getting all these free services, especially in your country too now. You know, all these people are coming in, taking everything from the people who work in your country, and your own people can't even get the fucking health services they need. They're what, talking about, you know, getting rid of your national health care or whatever, or privatizing it maybe? I don't know what happened. If, if any government... Decided to privatize the healthcare system that we vote without faster than we can. Uh, I think that's what makes your country great. Like, to me, that's an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> Why do you think it's called Great Britain, for fuck's sake? <laughs> I know. And the fact that, you know, so many people are just showing up and abusing it that they just to think that they talk about getting rid of it, it's like, Jesus Christ, like, there's a fucking problem. You know what I mean? It's, it's More people. More people need to carry to create an atmosphere where people who can't carry can be carried and the equilibrium sustains itself. Like in another hundred years, it's going to be terrible. You know, you can't have 2% of the population carrying the rest of it. It's just going to collapse. But no, remember, there's a breaking point, like you said, with the kids. Mm -hmm. What will happen is the general populace just won't take bullshit no more. So when you get, you know, the fucking the taking, a, a, you know, taking advantage of the system, people in general taking advantage of the system, what will happen is the general populace will be less tolerant to that type of shit. And then it will change politically with uh, the choices that people vote. Yeah, but I feel like now the general population is the people taking advantage of the shit. Like, even if the people, you know, it's hard because you got three classes. You got wealthy people who work and generate ridiculous sums of wealth. And even though they're heavily taxed, like, they still have so much money, it's not a big deal. But this the is, problem see, this is... is the problem that America hasn't experienced classes. And you're just starting to go through... Or you just start to go through the motions of classism. Mm -hmm. So about 200 years ago, if you were a poor person over here, and uh, so you have the lower class, the middle class, and the upper class, right? Mm -hmm. Upper class is the aristocracy and royal family and stuff, and then it peters down to nobles uh, and shit. Yeah, and then you have middle class, which is everyone else that is. Working and so forth. Shopkeepers, field yeah, workers, yeah, fucking shit like that. Soldiers. The lower class are the stooge, so they're the bums, the fucking welfare dependents, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Over here, that's essentially been. We've eliminated it, but it exists as a monetary uh, 
cap for what taxes we pay now so uh, the upper class pay more taxes than the middle class and then the lower class are the benefit type uh, people that need help uh -huh. America's never had that you've only had middle and upper class you've never had stewage you know, you know? Uh -huh. now you're just no. now you're getting to the point where you need to I don't know how to explain it without being a dick but socially you need to designate people as stowage, you know, uh -huh. bottom class, and then appropriate the taxes correctly and the uh, uh, governmental programs correctly. It's just like you have the middle class here, and like I wouldn't call myself middle class by any stretch of the imagination. Like, I'm low class, don't get me wrong, but I work my ass off. And I don't make shit, and I get taxed a good amount. Like I, like at I least said, a, said, like at least a quarter of my check goes to fucking taxes. You've never had America's never had a lower class. You've always had middle class and and upper class. So you've had the rich people and then everyone else. Whereas over here we have them three distinct. So like you know your place in the food chain as well mm. as society. Not that. See, this is where it gets shitty. Like, I know that if I were to walk around upper class stuff, I'd be looked down upon because I don't have the same level of education or uh, articulation when I'm talking and stuff. I look down at all the money, the wealth, and the history, like, like old money, you know, from 1800 money, or even further. But as a societal thing, you know, kind of need that. The biggest problem I see over here is the people in the middle who work their ass off and can barely make it get no benefits, but they get taxed to carry the people who don't want to work. And like me, like, dude, I'm in pain. Like, I got rotten fucking teeth, broken teeth in my mouth. Like, the past three weeks, man, like, pulsating, they're killing me. I'm in pain. Like, my herniated disc in my neck. Like, I don't even have fucking health insurance. And it's like, but I can work and pay taxes, but I can't get help, even though I desperately fucking need it. That, that's the, uh, that's the, the film on the side of the American system is that you as a citizen of America are expected to take care of yourself because you can. Mm. It's now, just... I agree, but I don't agree at the same time. I, I believe that if, uh, like this is where social, I don't want to say social, this is where free healthcare helps because you're doing your job, you're becoming a member of, you're doing it, you're a member of society, you're paying taxes, and to continue paying taxes, being a good member of society, having that free bit of healthcare would improve your product productivity towards working and shit, you know? Mm. Which means you, in the end run, you pay more taxes, you live longer, you pay more taxes, you know? It's just like, you know, the class of people who work and can barely make it and get no benefit are getting taxed so much. You know, wealthy people are getting taxed too, but it's not really that big of a deal to them. Like, they have everything they need. It's the people who are struggling, like the working class who can barely make it. Like, if I get hit with one bad sickness or disease, man, I'm fucked. If I live through it, I'm going to be in debt for the rest of my life because of it. You know what I mean? And it's very possible that I may not even get the health care I need for it because I don't have insurance and I just end up fucking dying. Yep. Like, that's a severe possibility right now. If my teeth became rotten and I go to the dentist and they're like, well, you need fucking $10,000 or you can't get help. Like, and I get some kind of infection and die in my sleep, like I'm fucked. You know what I mean? But the whole point is just like, over here, the it's growing, like the amount of people who work and can barely make it. But we're getting taxed, and that taxes is just going to get worse and worse lately, like the way things are going. It's just the system right now over here isn't going to sustain, like unless they change shit up, like you're talking about, like some kind of class system, figure, out, figure it out, like it's going to go downhill quick, and it's going to collapse. Well, they, they, they can't change the class system. All I said was that 
America's never had a, a lower class, you've always had middle and upper class. Never had that disparity between the three classes of society sort of thing. Because, like, the yeah, romanticized American dream is anyone can go to America and become rich and make and, and do it, you know? There are certain hurdles. And, uh, I don't want to say villainous, but uh, dark sides to the American dream. So if you don't work hard and uh, be successful, then you're stopped. You're stuck on that success ladder. And then you, and then more problems make you go down the ladder. So if you're in a really rich paying job, but then you break your leg, but you don't have health insurance, you don't go down the ladder because you can't afford to do the job any you or you physically can't do the job anymore but then, mm. but then you're using all the money that you've earned to pay for your leg to be fixed so you're back where you start you're, you're down a level it's like what I, I think i told you about this before they canceled my health benefits because i made too much money uh the cutoff is 150 percent federal poverty line earnings and i make 211 percent as of tax time when they calculated my earnings for the year so if i drop like what's that that's 61 percent but that's from 150 to 220 or 215 whatever the fuck it was but like if i work 20 hours less a week at work and i went from 50 hours a week to 30 hours a week I would qualify for, for completely free health care. Complete. Like, I wouldn't have to pay a fucking dime, and i get whatever I wanted, whatever I needed. See, so it's like, that's now I... Just a bit of legislation where... And then they're so, trying to... Sorry, go ahead. As I say, there's a bit of legislation where someone said, hey, look, this is... Someone has gone to their senator or whatever, and they're like, hey, look, I can't afford health, and it's solely done for that person or a group of individuals where a small group of people are not earning enough to qualify for healthcare so they get it changed to benefit that small amount of people but they don't realize <clears throat> that the wider scope of things more people will suffer from it it's kind of a, kind of like identity politics you want all these what? trans people and shit to be recognized and have you know you'd go to jail for misusing the pronouns mm -hmm. but then they don't look at the arguments for what if someone starts abusing it and falsely claiming stuff, you, you know, falsely saying that someone has said this, then you, know, yeah. you take these people to court, and then these, all of these products that are sponsored by these that person, you know, there's a cascading effect of consequences that happen that these people don't realise uh, uh, contribute to making stuff worse when you actually, when you think you're doing better. Mm. Like, uh, what I'm getting at is like. Barbecue is a classic example. So, hey, look, we're doing well, that's it. gone this year. Yeah, but it's a classic example of, hey, look, we're going to give healthcare for people, but then the other, for everyone, but then the other, the downside to it is that you're forced to buy it. If you don't buy it, then you're, you're child, you know. You're well, in this more. state, if you don't have, under the Obamacare thing, at least in this state, I think it might be a little different in some states. Uh, if you weren't insured for the majority of the tax year, here it's a $750 fine on your taxes. Whatever you get back for a tax refund, they take $750 of that away if you didn't have health insurance. But they're getting rid of that this year. Trump put some kind of legislation in place uh, when he went into office, and now this year will be the first year if you didn't have health insurance, you don't get hit with that fine. It's, it's like the beginning of the Obamacare repeal, you know what I mean? Yeah, but and that's a cascading effect of, hey, look, let's give everyone free health care. But what they don't talk about the, hey, look, if you don't have health care, then we charge you anyway. So, you, that no one, like, all policy making should be done for the benefit of everyone, not just a group of people, you know? Yeah. What that's I was a, saying earlier is that... Uh, like recent examples like hey look we need to ban fucking knives and, the, and like blanket knives so I hope, so I hope, yeah yeah because there's so many stabbings in london so people guess, kill people knives don't kill people yeah but they, yeah. they don't they don't look at it and they don't think about the cascading consequences of uh, 
of their actions. So knife crime is up because knives are easy accessible. So they go to the simpler solution and be like, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll ban knives. So they ban the knives, and what they do is they criminalize. Like there was a guy that got uh, pulled over by the police. He had a box of knives in his bag, and they took him to the police station. He was a fucking chef going to work. But that's the cascading effects of, uh, the cascading consequences of rushing <laughs> stuff in and not thinking about the other multi layers towards stuff. It's like, so when the state took my health insurance away, they sent me another letter and they're like, well, you qualify for state funded health plans. Go onto our website and you can, you know, help. It's called like a partial play, pay health plan. So I'm like, all right. So based on what I make, above the federal poverty level is what these plans cost. So I go to look at these plans and the cheapest plan they have, the cheapest, $320 a month. Now, I pay that $320 a month. That doesn't get me nothing. On top of the privilege of paying my membership fee, which is basically what it is, I have to contribute $7,500 of my own money before they will assist in covering anything. Now, when you do the math and you're like, all right, I work 50 hours a week. I'm going to buy my $320 a month health insurance from the state. And I'm going to pay $7,500 for the year before they even give me any kind of help with that plan. So that's like. It's like 10, at least $10,000 that I have to pay out of my pocket. And now when it's like, maybe if I just didn't work those extra 20 hours so I'd fall under that poverty level, I'd get all those benefits for free, not have to pay a dime. I'd actually have more money in my fucking pocket and full health insurance as opposed to busting my ass and working as much as I can. Like now you have society giving you no incentive to go work hard and make money, they actually want you to work less and take the fucking handout. And they're encouraging that shit with their policy. That's what's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, that's what's wrong. It's not wrong. It's cascading consequence. So, we probably sat down like, hey, look, most Americans are about this. So, let's put it at this. Uh, so, all these people that are below the threshold of making that money can get this healthcare thing and then they'll benefit. What they don't talk about is what about the people that are just over it? Well, I'm making minimum wage. This is what any scumbag in the state of Massachusetts would make for any job, no matter how simple what their education level is, the easiest, simplest job. Now, poor people are going to work, some of them. You got poor people working, and now it's like, all right, you're making minimum wage. Uh, you're going to work 50, 60 hours a week to better yourself and try to be a worker and contribute and have a better life. But if you want health insurance and the necessary shit to stay alive, you're going to make more by not working as much and getting a handout than you do busting your ass. Like, that's backwards. Like, that doesn't make sense for a society that wants to sustain itself. You know what I mean? It just doesn't work. Like, the system doesn't work. Like, it's backwards and is... No, no, over no. here, the roads are falling apart. Like, no one has budgets to fix necessary shit for survival anymore. Like, it, things are going downhill. It does It does work, but it doesn't work for everyone. So, like I said, it only works for that group of people that are below that line of income. And anyone else that is above that line of income could... Is, is not included or is not thought about when the policy is made, you know? Democrats over here, the liberals, the left, they want people to be poor and have nothing and need the handout and need the government to depend on the government to live. And that's their entire fucking angle. And over here, that's why it's such like vitroil between Democrats and Republicans. Republicans, it's just, you know, get rid of the political names and shit. There's two sides. There's a side that wants you to do nothing and need the government to get by. And then there's a side that says, 
go out there and work and better yourself and you know make your own dream come true well, no, and it's like the tough. democrats know that if you need them and the government to survive you're gonna vote for them and that's gonna keep them in power and that's their fucking entire angle man it's not quite it's not quite true both the, both the political parties in america are based on profit but depending on how they get received the profit is the way that they make their policy so and the, the sides policy uh, like ethical policies have changed within the last 100 years as well so during the uh, the 60s and stuff the, uh, the democrats were for fucking segregation and shit down south whereas the republicans were not and now it's it's you know the republicans went with the christian hard right during the mid 80s sometime to get that vote but it's interesting as well because you get but from someone looking out into the American system, you can see why uh, you can see the, the lines more clearer, and uh, and how they tactically target people to get them. To, it's not about what they can change; it's about how they can get people to vote for them. So the Democrats play high, highly on lower income, worse off worse people. The right? welfare nanny state that you need to survive because you can't exist without them. Well, I don't. Is I, I don't their think whole thing. I don't think uh, can't exist without the government. They think they're using the lower class uh, ethnic uh, minority side to get more votes so that they can win elections. Rather than yeah, but when the, when they hook you with the benefits, you there's a whole class of people well, yeah. over here now who can't exist without the government, without the fucking food cards, without the fucking you know Section Eight housing. Like you need that shit to survive now because you have no skills, you don't do nothing. All you do is live and get fucked up on drugs and booze, and you need the government to live. And without the Democratic Party in charge to give you and support those handouts and keep like voting that shit up, taking more tax money to keep it going, it collapses. That's their power. That's their fucking stranglehold, you know? And it's a master stroke, like, for the people who want to be in charge because of that. Like, you know, Republicans are about businesses, corporations, you know, people who work, people who are fiscally responsible, like, just principles of, you know, being a decent person and, you know, not mooching and instead of earning your keep. And the left is, it's the fucking opposite, you know. And they have this whole guise of humanity and being inclusive, but they're the most uninclusive fucking people because the minute you don't agree with them and disagree with them, they call for your fucking death by any means necessary. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, a, that's the nature of uh, American politics. It doesn't matter what uh, party you It always pisses me off uh, whenever I see political debates over here where some, some policy has uh, been brought up that has either failed or not worked very well. The uh, opposing party will then blame the other party for it, and then it becomes mm -hmm. a, a blame game, and it gets boring. It's like, well, I don't care if it worked or not. What are the solutions to making it work, and how can you get it to work? And then they don't talk the points about it. They then chat shit about, oh, we should blame this on this party because it was their idea. So like, for fuck's sake, this is not... I have no time for that. You know, a couple times over here it's been suggested in the papers and shit and, you know, people in certain platforms. If you collect welfare of any kind, this should be a drug test. And the second that was said, people freaked the fuck out. Why did they freak out? Because it's true. If you're gonna mooch and you're just gonna get fucked up all day, you know... You're purposely mooching to have it easy and get shit for free and not contributing. If you're in trouble and you have problems, disabilities, and you need the legitimate safety net, you should be able to get it, obviously. That's an awesome thing to have for people. That's, you know, civilization, society. Some people are hurting. Some people have catastrophes and troubles, sicknesses. Like, that should be there, man. That's a beautiful thing. Like, my mother, when she was a single mother and I was a baby, had welfare. You know, she got food from the government. She got, you know, help with housing. Uh, she got toys for me for Christmas from a program called Toys for Tots for poor people. Like... 
you know, that's a beautiful thing to have in civilization. That's what, you know, we've come to, like helping the less fortunate. The problem is all these people who aren't less fortunate who just choose to be. And they want a lot of them get fucked up and use drugs. And they're killing the system. Give them a fucking drug test. You want welfare? Prove you need the safety net and you're not just fucking lazy. Well, Take well. the fucking drug test. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do drugs and not work? That's your choice. You don't qualify for the fucking safety net. Well, no, there are better solutions. So, a better solution would be to legalize all types of drug use. All types of drug use. And then tax it. So, then the people that are claiming welfare will then buy drugs that are produced by the government. So, then it becomes a feedback loop of the government gives these welfare people money. The welfare people money then buy the drugs which then goes back into the government's pocket. No, but that's not the answer, man. Like, even over here with, like, weed being legalized now and shit, like, it kind of makes me sick. Like, yeah, it's good the government's making money off it, and it's good that they don't have to worry about law enforcement and they can divert to other priorities, but it's like, I see what's happening to people in society using drugs and getting fucked up. You know, and it's like I look at lottery over here, like lottery state run in this country. Every state runs its own lottery and the government's fucking running it and they're milking the people out of their fucking money and they're abusing people and, you know, they're literally killing people with this shit. And it's like for them to start selling drugs, basically you're turning the government into a giant fucking drug dealer now. You know no, what no, I mean? No. And it's like that, sh the government should exist for the betterment of people, not to take advantage of them and profit off yeah, it. So, if you legalize all types of drugs and you tax it, it's not the government's responsibility of what individuals do with their money or their personal, uh, uh, what's call it? You know, their personal, uh, private time or whatever the fuck it is. By taxing it and legalizing it, you then sort the problem of for-profit prisons out, but then you're not having a large intake of minority or uh, unwell-off people being put in prison and then taken advantage of by the prison system itself with the grants and stuff. So you eliminate the criminal population by taxing and legalizing drugs. You remove all of the organized, you allow organized crime from the drug dealers that are smuggling it in and uh, selling it on the streets. You eliminate burglary and uh, low level violent crime from people stealing to buy drugs, money for really expensive drugs. And then by legalizing the drugs, you've li limited organized crime. You've limited low level violent crime and burglary. But not really, because you just changed the definition. Like, if I sold opiates and filled needles ready to go at the store off the shelf like I sold cigarettes, you know, now everybody's going to be a fucking addict. No and then no there's still going to be people who run out of money and do that crime anyway, and there's going to no, be even no, more of them. No, no. How many, how many people have stolen money or burgled people to buy cigarettes? Probably thousands, because the people doing that shit aren't just thousands, buying yeah, cigarettes, they need an opiate too, you know thousands, what I mean? Yeah, thousands of, thousands of people out of 350 billion is, is acceptable, in, as far as I'm concerned. If a, it, out of a population of 350 million, and a thousand people start robbing people, then that, that's nothing. It's less than, a, less, it's less than 1% of the population are doing it. That's crime that the police can handle. You seen what opiates and heroin does to people, right? Yeah, I do. But uh, can I you imagine distributing that to the entire willing population that, off well, the count over the counter at a convenience store? Like you know what would happen, man? I, I know exactly. What, in Portugal, all drugs are legalized. You can buy uh, any type of drug you want in Portugal. But what they do is they have it, it's taxed. And they also have a support system, so, like you said about the drug test, whenever you go for a interview for a job in Portugal, you're required to do a drugs test, and if you uh, come up with any of the drugs, then they automatically fail your application. What happens is people uh, uh, 
knowingly stay clean uh, for longer periods of time and don't get addicted to maintain their their source of income. And once they've got the job, I think the uh, the tests are every six months. So what happens is it, it keeps people uh, within the straight and narrow because they're earning they're earning enough money to buy their stuff, but they also realise that if they don't uh, pass the drug test, they won't be able to buy the drugs and earn money to maintain the habit sort of thing. Yeah, yeah but that's... You're assuming a certain level of no, no. responsibility no, no, uh, no, in a person to maintain their drug habit. Yeah, it, it, you it know? happens. They also have... It, it's recorded, and, there, and there's been studies and stuff done in Portugal. People were, like, doing it. We also have... Uh, a uh, really good, uh, re well, I don't say rehab, but a uh, coming off drugs program as well. In place with uh, good mental health and stuff for people that are addicted. So if you're a homeless barman in Portugal that's a drug addict, they'll take you off the street, they'll put you through rehab, and they'll give you the necessary means to maintain a job and stuff. Portugal is a, is a good example of... Uh, how you legalize the drug, and their, I want to say their violent, their, their violent crime has gone down a hell of a lot. Their tech, let me get, let me get you some things. You know, every winter over here, we call it home invasion season. And yeah. then, you know, these opiate-stricken areas come on the Cape, all the work dries up in the fucking, you know, starting in the fall, the end of fall, once landscapers and fall cleanup start. All the scumbags who do work go without work, and now nobody has money. And all the Taurus houses start getting broken into every fucking year over the winter, you know, for all these drug-addled nuts looking for ma money, change, shit to sell, whatever they can, you know. And now, you legalize it, you legalize this shit, and the amount of people who can just walk in and buy it right off the shelf, and now they're becoming fucking heroin addict junkies, for a time, you know, Maybe they'll be able to afford their habit, but just like any fucking junkie, it will consume them. No, read, look, read, look. And now they won't be able to afford it no yeah, more. Yeah, you read, know? read some of the stuff that. There's got to be devil advocate, though. I'm sure with a Google search, you can find all the shit talking about why it's a bad idea, you know, and why it isn't working in Portugal. These are proper studies. So that these are the observations. An increased uptake of treatment, roughly 60%. Reduce reduction in new HIV diagnosis amongst drug users by 70% and a general drop of 90% in drug-related HIV infection. Reduction in drug-related deaths, although this reduction is decreased in later years, the number of drug-related deaths is now almost on the same level as before the drug strategy was implemented. Reported lifetime use of all illicit drugs increased from 78 to 12%. Lifetime use of cannabis increased from 76 to 11%. Cocaine use more than doubled from 0 0.9 to 1.9. Ecstasy doubled. <sighs> This, that this effect may have been related to candor or, or interviewees who may have been inclined to answer more truthfully due to reduction in the stigma associated with drug use during the same period. The use of heroin and cannabis also increased in Spain and Italy, where drugs for personal use was decriminalized many years earlier than in Portugal, while the use of cannabis and heroin decreased in the rest of Western Europe. The increase of drug use observed among adults in Portugal was not greater than that seen in nearby countries that did not change the drug laws. Drug use among adolescents 13 to 15 years and problematic users declined. Drug-related criminal justice workloads decreased. Decreased street value of most illicit drugs. The number of drug-related deaths has reduced from 131 in 2001 to 20 in 2008. As of 2012, Portugal's drug death toll set at 3 per million. 
So three people died per million in Portugal of drug use now. In comparison to the EU average of 17.3 per million, so 17 people per million die of drug use in the EU where it's illegal. Homicide rate from 1.3% uh, 1.3 per 100,000 in 2000 to 1.76 in 2007, then decreased to 0.96 in 2015. So there are what benefits to, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, legalizing it. Uh, most stuff goes down. The, the better regulated it is. Then. Well, the price of uh, street drugs went down. Which is a big one. So then all the dealers are out of business. All the organised crime is out of business in, and the people that are smuggling in, so they can either then get with the program and pay tax and bring it in legally, and then make shit tons of money, or they can keep selling shitty stuff at a high price on the street that no one's gonna buy. I do not want to live in a society where it is sanctioned for you to become a fucking heroin addict. Well, this study says people are not becoming addicts. They just do it, and then they either don't do it, or they occasionally do it. You can't occasionally do heroin. <laughs> you do heroin, and you become a fucking addict, and then you become a full-blown junkie. Like, that's how it works. Like, there's no, like, oh, me and my buddies went out this month for our birthday, and we shot heroin, and had a good time, and, you know, that's over. I'm back to work. Got it out of my system. Like, it's not how it works, you know what I mean? That's not how heroin works on people. Like, once you start doing heroin, like, you can't stop, you know? Like... It takes you over and you become so dope sick, you will do anything to get it again. You know, it's like Luciferum in fucking uh, Rimworld. It's, I don't know, man. It's just, it's bad. And I don't, you know, all other drugs like cocaine, ecstasy, shit, weed. Like, yeah, what you're saying, it makes sense. And I, I can see that. But fucking heroin and opiate, man, like... That's something no one should be doing. Like, it's terrible. Like, it will ruin you and everyone around you in society. Like, that should not be condoned. Like, kids need education, you know? We need better parents. We need smarter fucking people. We don't need everybody with a fucking needle in their arm, even if the government's fucking making money off it, you know? And, you know, maybe say they did legalize it tomorrow and decriminalize it. You know, maybe in a hundred years it would work itself out and things may be better. But I can't see it making a better tomorrow. You know what I mean? They wouldn't you'd need like 10 years to implement that in America. You know, everyone I know who smokes weed and even me, Jaeger, like, I became a fucking idiot, like a numbed out drugged out idiot when I smoked weed every day well, like yeah. weed yeah, isn't yeah. good for people yeah, yeah. no matter what they fucking wait, wait, say wait, like, wait. there you go you smoked it every fucking day <laughs> no but that's my point like we're legalizing it dude and the fact that like in Colorado you can go to a store a convenience store now and you can buy a cigarette pack with 21 gram joints in it you know it's like once I start thinking about like everybody just being able to get even weed, just weed, everybody being able to get weed and everyone smoking weed, it makes me sick because it's like, dude, it's not good for you. It's not good for your mind. It's not good for being a healthy fucking functioning person. But here it is condoned, legalized and introduced to everybody. Thumbs up go for it you know what i mean and it makes me sick inside it really does like i think about how much it's fucked up my life and ruined my shit you know so you and now here it is for everybody yeah but that's the nature of the beast man like you start drinking and you know you get used to it and the next thing you know you're drinking all the time and now you're an alcoholic and now your life's in the toilet but we can sell it at the store i don't even think we should be fucking selling booze man the nips i sell every day i got these people coming in now i've been there six years i've seen kids from when they turn 21 they're almost 30 now dude you know people with no self-control mentally weak people 
and they're drinking 10, 15, 20 of these fucking things a day, Jaeger, and they're bloated. They look like they're dead. They can barely talk. Like, it makes me sick, and I've been selling it to them, killing them. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, when I get home from my job, man, I do not feel good. Like, I am not doing anybody any favors at this store. I'm selling people fucking state-run lottery, taking their money, bankrupting everybody. I'm selling people booze and poison. And I know, but my point is, like, the symptoms of society, the answers, man, it's fucking education and it's love for the children. You know, we got to stop laying bad eggs and hatching bad chickens and stop making the eggs good so we got good chickens. And then all these problems. You can't take, uh, you can't take people's choice away to be an asshole. It's not about being an asshole, man. It's about people being weak. Well, even then, like, you can't, you can't take people's, uh, choice away from being weak to what they want to do, even if it is detrimental to them, you know? Yeah, but obviously a junkie wants to shoot fucking horse and get high, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make it okay to do. It doesn't make it okay that's to do. That's why it's illegal, you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't make it okay to do, but you can't take his, uh, you can't take his right away to do that, you know? No, but you can have a system where, you know, you try to, you know, get that shit out like it's bad. You know, people are stupid. People need fucking rules sometimes. You know, if you're too stupid to listen, and you're gonna put fucking heroin in your veins anyway, like... Yeah, I know, but it's a very dangerous line that you're going down, where... Education about bad drugs and stuff is, is good, and uh, should be taught to everyone, and the consequences of, uh, of uh, doing drugs like that. So I get down the line of... Uh, uh, trying to stop people from doing stuff like that, then it becomes it becomes questionable, you know. Like stopping people from shooting heroin. Like I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it should be illegal. You know what I mean? You're gonna do, you're gonna choose to do what you choose to do, no matter what. We're humans. That's what makes us special. Yeah, but that's that's the, that's what you're essentially. Oh, no, but I'm saying it's not something society or the government should be enabling people to do like it should be something actually worked against you know what i mean yeah. on that kind of level yeah but on what's the next what's the next thing that they decide is bad for people to do that will be removed well i mean over there it seems like you can't even voice your fucking opinion no more without getting brought to court and having charges against you but yeah that, that's that's the next that's the next I mean, there has to be a happy medium if we're going to have a civilization and a society. There has to be rules. I mean, there has to be a middle ground. Like, we can't take the rules and run with them till you know, you can't do nothing, obviously. But we can't not have any because people are fucking stupid. So it's like, you know, the government should be protecting, going out of its way to help protect stupid people, not take advantage of them. Like the state-run lottery, gambling, makes me sick. The government's preying on weak, pathetic people well, no, with no, no, no impulse control, no, 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 no intelligence. You know what I mean? No, they be here for this. that's their choice. I could run a, their state-run lottery, right? They run a lottery, right? But it's the other people's choice to buy lottery tickets. If you ban it, then people will turn around and say, but I want, you know, I, I like to buy a lottery ticket, and you take them right away to... Is someone present? You, you take away people's choice to actually do uh, stupid, even if it is stupid. You're taking away people's choice to, to do stupid shit. This They're is what pisses stupid. me off about lottery. Most of the lottery, we call them grinders. These are people who come to the store every day, regulars, they come every day. Some of them come eight, nine, ten times on my shift. And they buy hundreds of dollars in fucking scratch tickets. Now, these are people who do it every day. They lose all their money every day and they come back and they do it nice. every day. These are the same people who don't work, who have fucking EBT cards, who sell drugs, like... Yeah, and there's a, yeah, but there, this is, this is where I talk, this is what I just said about, it's a cascade of consequences, right? 
them people really shouldn't be buying lottery tickets, but they're buying lottery tickets because they think we're going to win money when they should be out working better on themselves and so forth and so forth. Or start, at least start, saving their ill-gotten yeah, money. Yeah. But if you stop removing the lottery, all the people that are not part of, that are not like them, that are workers and stuff that enjoy buying the lottery tickets are then affected by the cascade of consequences because now you've banned that, they've lost Sweet. their uh, choice to fucking do that. So you've taken away something that they... Oh, well, uh, you know, you're taking away their right to buy their own lottery tickets because other people, you're trying to save the other people from not doing it, you see? But it's a scammed rigged game by the government, like... Yeah, yeah but it doesn't matter if it's scammed or rigged. It's about the, the right, the rights of the, the people that you're taking away that can afford to do it. I'm not saying gambling should be banned. I'm saying the government should be banned from running gambling itself, like in Las Vegas, right? This is a yeah, good example, yeah. Nevada. Nevada, Las Vegas. Gambling's privatized. The government oversees the private industry to make sure they don't rip people off too much and keep it semi-fair. In my state, the government is running it. They are the casino. And there's no odds or standards to protect people because it's the government. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it's right. rigged and it's rigged to the max. And it's the government, so there's nothing you can do about it. You know what I mean? Like, you want to gamble, go gamble. Go to a horse track. Gamble. You know, go to a whatever, a cockfight. I don't give a fuck. The government shouldn't be the people running this shit. And like in Las Vegas, it should be privatized, and the government should oversee it to make sure people aren't getting too fucked. That's a, the right way to implement it. Everywhere else, every other state, it's the fucking wrong way. You know what I mean? But they, yeah, they're different equivalencies to... The government shouldn't the government, be a yeah. drug dealer. You know, maybe le weed becomes legal, and, you know, I'm not saying the government should own the weed industry and grow it and sell it. You know, that's different. It should be privatized. The government taxes it, you know. And then all the benefits you talked about, like in Portugal, like that makes sense to me. What I'm saying is the government, like communism, like, you know, Russia, like, you know, vodka production by the state, for the state, for the people. Like, the government shouldn't be involved in shit that is bad for you and harmful to people. If anything, if it's a choice and a vice, maybe you legalize it, give it oversight, and regulate it, you know. But the government shouldn't be the one running it. The government shouldn't be running fucking impulse scratch tickets. Scratch tickets are the original loot box for fucking the retarded populace. All these young kids buying loot boxes and shit over here, Jaeger, like the Americans eating the shit up. It's all kids whose parents a scratch ticket freaks because they come in the store and they gamble with their parents and their parents will pick them out tickets and let them pick tickets and it's disgusting man like I see this learned behavior I've seen kids now from 14 15 and now they're 20 and they're fucking gambling degenerate freak addicts dude and they get their paycheck every week they come to the store and in an hour their fucking entire week's gone. And they're picking cigarettes up off the ground. They're going through the fucking dumpster for newspapers and food. Like, they're begging me for a cup of water or a hamburger. You know what I mean? Like... Remember, though, that's, that's their choice as well. Yes, but it's not the government's place to ruin its citizens in its own benefit. If anything, you privatize it. You regulate it. Taxi. Yeah, that's, that's a different, a different, uh, a different discussion than towards uh, governmental gambling compared to individuals' uh, usages towards uh, vices and so forth. Like, you know, you're a normal person. You may get the occasional lottery ticket. I've heard you talking about yeah, spending yeah, a couple yeah. quid now and then. Hey, man. I buy the occasional fucking scratch ticket even though I know better. No big deal. A person makes money, you know, whatever they want to gamble. That's their business. A person should be able to do what they want to do. But it's different with me with government. The government should be 
for the good of citizens, the good of its society. The government shouldn't be taking advantage of the chinks in its citizens' armor to benefit from it. Like, that's that's the total opposite of what government's supposed to be there for in the first place. And then, like, in Las Vegas, gambling's there, it's privatized, but the government regulates it and even keeps it from being too unfair. But now when the government's running it, there is no checks and balances. You know what I mean? It's it's just like a cop shouldn't be selling you heroin and scratch tickets. You know, a cop should be there for the good of society. You know what I mean? It's kind of, you know, if you break it down to its simplest terms, it's, you know, a police officer shouldn't be driving an ice cream truck filled with drugs and scratch tickets and nips for stupid people yes. to just fucking waste their money on get fucked up and die. Like, that's your choice. You can do what you want, but it's not the government's place to go. I don't know. Fuck them all. You know, part of me's a humanist and wants to see society better, and then there's part of me that's just like, you know what, man? You're a waste of life. You're a fucking no good piece of shit. Like, I love to just put a fucking bullet in your head and, you know, make the world a better place. You know, when I go check the. I do trash at the store. When I gotta go empty a fucking trash bag, I have to look very carefully. Are there any syringes in there? Are there any needles? Am I gonna get fucking AIDS or hepatitis or HIV from fucking changing a trash bag at my minimum wage job? What like, you should do is should uh, change it, and then when you change it, put a clean, uh, what you call it, in there. Syringe? Yeah, or, or stab yourself with it, put a clean syringe in there, and then say to the bosses, hey, look, are you a fucking prick? I'm gonna sue the fuck out of you, because you don't need lead gloves enough, to change yeah, the yeah. fucking trash there's, there's no, uh... Hazmat suit. There's no, uh, thingy that can stop me from being, uh, protect me from this. You're you winning straight away. It's fine, you win. You know, in my old town, all the convenience stores have a glass plate where the clerk is in a box because it's so fucking dangerous to work. There's a little slide-out draw. You put your money in, it slides out to the clerk, and they put, like, your cigarettes and scratch tickets and shit in. And, uh, they slide it to you. You never get a chance to interact with them. And that's what this fucking country's turning into, man. When, uh, the get the guns. That just feels terrible. I need to get out of this job. Like, I don't want to be under this situation. Like, my outlook is permeating my soul. It's poisoning me. Like it's terrible. Like I need a better atmosphere. You know. Like I can't. I can't keep being cursed and just ponder shit. Like it's turning me into shit. I, can't, I hope I get this new job. I'll be in a fucking potato chip factory at a packaging machine without the general public walking in to fucking bring me the world's problems. I'll be on my own in a fucking room putting potato chips in the back, man, and I can't yeah, fucking yeah, wait. Problems. Different problems, though. You know? have people fucking... Yeah, but I gotta deal with them that all day. Now, from yeah, anyone who comes off the street, I'd rather have the same band of six fucking people I see every day in the packaging room deal with that. Yeah, you know what be, I mean? It would be more sinister, and you know, of the people no. that are doing it just because they don't like you, just because you said Trump or something. These people coming off the street all fucked up and try to talk. You know, we have like these intelligent conversations and the dregs of society come with the store and try to do it with me, dude. And I'm just like, you know what? Get the fuck out of here. Like, I don't do politics, I don't do religion. Oh, I do. The other day, this old drunk guy named Arthur comes in, and this guy's been seen crawling down the sidewalk. That's how fucked up he gets. He shit his pants in the store once and tracked <laughs> diarrhea everywhere. <laughs> this guy came in the store the other night, and my friend Sean was in there. And uh, this guy, you know, me and Sean will pretend he's just a customer and I'm just a clerk, but we'll do or say ridiculous shit to, like, make people uncomfortable. 
So as soon as Arthur walks in the door, I yelled to Sean. I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this fucking place. I'm fucking Muslim now. I hope Mohammed rides through here and kills all these Christian motherfuckers. <laughs> and I could just see fucking Arthur staring at me and shaking all bad like typical fat old American drunk. You know what I mean? And uh, he don't know I'll be like I'm trying to play it off like dead serious, you know, talking about Islam and you know how all these Americans need to discover the path and shit. And uh, Sean's just like sitting there, like listening to me. And this guy's getting all wicked hot, you know. <laughs> there was another night me and Sean were outside and we're having a cigarette talking. And there's this younger kid who comes in with his girlfriend to get cigarettes, and they're like social justice, like liberal Democrat Obama warriors. This kid's sitting in the car, and me and Sean and this dude Barry are talking, and we're talking about Trump. And Sean was drunk, so he said Trump kind of loud. And we all noticed when Sean said the name Trump, this kid in the car's head jerks to the side like someone just, you know, shot at him. And he's staring daggers at us. So without missing a beat, and this kid doesn't know like, we're on to him, I start talking with him loud. And I'm like, you know what I like about President Trump? And Trump's like, what? And I'm like, I like the fact that he's the first president I feel like would come down here and work with me at this convenience store if he had to. <laughs> and uh, Sean was just like telling me after the, about the expression on the kid's face and shit and then we were just laughing so hard fucking with him, you know? Like having our loud conversation with him thinking he's eavesdropping but he was so obvious to us, you know? We, I mean, I have fun. There's instances of fun in my dreary horribleness, but they're very few and far between, and that's not even worth it. I just want a job where I don't deal with the public. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I'm hauling shit and cast iron fucking buckets. I just don't want to deal with the public. It's a festive nightmare no more. I'd say 30% of our customers who come in the store, I use the term customer loosely, loosely, don't have money. They're there to get whatever free shit they can get. Dude, I've seen a kid take an empty coffee cup off the ground, run over to our chili cheese machine, fill up the cup with cheese and chili and drink it. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, oh, I just needed something to eat. And I'm like, dude, you gotta buy the nacho to use the chili cheese machine. That's what it's for. And he's like, oh, I thought it was free. And I'm like, well, are you gonna buy anything else today? No, I don't have any money. Well, what the fuck are you doing in a store? It's like it's a comfort station. I've told so many kids the same line. I say, it's not a homeless shelter. It's not a soup kitchen. It's not a comfort station. This is a business. When you come in here, you come in here to buy something from this business. When you do not come in here to use the business, you're either loitering or you're soliciting. And you gotta leave. The past couple weeks, I've kicked like 15, 20 people out of the store off the fucking lot, hassling customers, badgering people for money, cigarettes. These big fucking junky kids will like crowd around old ladies and shit and demand change or a ride somewhere. Like, it's fucking terrible, man. Makes me sick. We need Judge Dredd. Come up here. As long as he comes after the rest of them. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm gonna go heat up dinner.
Got it. can. Whoever is making that smell needs hey. to seek medical attention.
immediately. Hostile sensor reading detected. Attack. in error. No enemy detected. Movement detected. Curious. I recommend against hostile action. The sensitivity of my sensors clearly needs adjustment. You were not...
I'm... What's up? It's not multiplayer. We can play it together. Yeah. You're, you're like it. We're on a lot of the same hours. We should stop playing something together. Can you play joint campaign in Napoleon? Total War? Uh, maybe. I can't remember. Do you have a Tiller? I do not. Hmm. The games we do both have. Well, no, I'm never, I'm never gonna get to see everyone. I just mean like, in general, like what are the multiplayer games you guys have been playing? Why? Can you play co-op co uh, campaign? Yes, you can. My problem with that is too how you can do that ultimate campaign with like every faction from the first and second that's what I'd want and to get that I'd have to buy like two games and all the DLCs that'd be like hundreds of dollars or well I think uh, I think uh, what's it called Warhammer 2000 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 I'm going to Warhammer 2 goes on sale and I'm going to pick it up. Yeah, hopefully when that happens, one will, and maybe I'll uh, finally bite the fucking bullet and get it. When Especially I, if we can play multiplayer. When I picked one up, it goes on sale with all the DLC. What's up with Fallout 5? Did you get sick of that? Fallout 5? I mean Far Cry 5. I will limit the And once says that we can cope, you said you wanted to cope. Did they patch it yet where if you play together the non-host gets progress and shit? Because before... Because originally on release, uh... The person joining the host didn't get any unlocks of progress, like new weapons and nothing. That's what all the unlocked anyway, so. That's what all the negative bad reviews were about. That it got on Steam, with like 90% of those were people saying in co-op mode, like the second person didn't get nothing. You know, they stayed with basic shit, didn't progress. So I wonder if I hosted and you joined me, if you'd already have all your shit unlocked and then I'd be able to unlock my shit. So that could be fun multiplayer. Yeah, but why, if you can still get mods for free, why, I don't understand, like, like I told you I was under the impression that you had to sign up for the mod shop and pay a monthly, uh, a one-time no, subscription. So why exactly. would people give it bad reviews then, so if you don't have to? They don't like, uh, paid mods.
did you think did you play Fallout 3 in New Vegas? I did, yeah. What were your thoughts on those as games? They're okay. I thought Fallout 3 was fucking, like, amazing. New Vegas was cool, but it wasn't as good as 3 to me. I'm wondering how Fallout 4 compares, you know? I like this one. You get little settlements you can build in the settlements. Mod your weapons. Is it first person or third person? It's both. You choose the you want to have. Yeah, three in New Vegas was like that. I never play third person ever. I don't like third person. Is that the DLC good for it? I don't know, I've not bought it, so. Wow, there's a lot of it. There's like five, it's kind of like free. There's like five expansions or whatever. Creation Club is that mod thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been looking at this game for a couple weeks now. It's called Star Traders Frontiers. Uh, November of 2017, but it's oh, early thank you, access. Mary. The survival project has really helped. It takes my mind off things. Huh? All the reviews are awesome, everything I've read about it seems awesome. The devs are wicked active, like putting out updates every week with like massive amounts of shit. It looks really cool. And it's only 15 bucks, like, it's not too much money. Yeah, it's I even reserved 15 bucks on my card this week to, for the money to buy it, but I just haven't I just haven't had time to play fucking man. games for like the past couple of weeks. I've been getting home and like I'll spend 20 minutes like reading the most recent reviews about this game. I'll check the forums and then I'm like in bed and back at fucking work. It's terrible.
jealous of folks who can craft something other than a paradigm. Run that resources again. I know how that goes. Stay sharp. Don't let your guard down. Good down. Wish it was fucking low. I could see. <laughs> I miss being a gamer, man. I miss just having, like, all kinds of time to play games and shit. But it's like, when I had so much time, like, I was too depressed to even want to play games, and now that I have no time, it's all I want to do. But even on the nights where I'm, like, home from work and I don't have to work on Wednesday, I'm like, oh, there's nothing to play, you know? I just want to, like, have time and sit down and fucking lose myself in something. That's, like, the last game that really did that for me is Elite. That's why I keep, like, thinking back to it, man, you know? Yeah, like, what... When Elite had all the smoke and mirrors up at first and you thought, like, it was doing all kinds of shit it wasn't, it was, like, amazing, you know? You thought there was like this living, like interacted universe, and then you realize just like a bunch of little localized instances where everything was like randomly spawned. I used to see ships going about their business and like, you know, think the game like was tracking them and they were all doing something for somebody. Nah, man, they're all just like randomly spawned around you and shit. This is true. It's crap. That's what I liked about the game uh, X2. Every ship doing something in the game was actually, like, doing something. The game was, like, way smaller. But, like, all the NPCs and shit, like, had reason and were persistent. Is, do I have armor for two? Army for two. Should be. Yes, I do. I do not want to wake up at seven in the morning.
can't believe there's no good games coming out. Yeah. Most folks are just looking for a hand. Hey, Carla. You again. I almost Here's bought the Humble Bundle War Games Bundle. I've got a few minutes to browse. Here's what I got. Well, it has Day of Infamy and Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. Man, but man, I'm never going to have That's great. I'm never going to have time to play them anyway, so I'm bother. Why not? So I don't have fucking time to do anything. Never mind play like a first person shooter, you know, multiplayer. It's just like not the experience I'm craving lately. You'll find what you're looking for. I know it. Feel free to see what you can do with my guns. What gave you the idea we're friends? Busy. Have you played Rainbow Six Siege? I have. Obviously own it, right? I, uh, I only have the I only played it when it was in beta. It's supposed to be like the next big, not the next big thing, but the big thing. Well. The graphics don't look that great to me. It looks a little dated, to be honest. It was old. I think I'm gonna get that Star Trader game the next day I have time to fucking play.
You know what game I just would get disappointed in? Them? Steel Division Normandy. It's okay, but it has uh, problems. I thought it was like a ghetto shit version of Red Dragon, like war game. Not just Red Dragon, like European Escalation, Alien Battle, Red Dragon. It had like this quality to it, and then like Steel Battalion, it felt Supervisor like White. they you took easy, what war beautiful? game Red Dragon did and like built it with a third party studio and used like wicked shitty like sound and like effects and everything and like. It just felt like a ghetto, low-ass budget version of what the other war games were. Well, it is, uh... It is, uh, what's it called? I mean, maybe it's more polished, I'll have to give it another go, but... I don't like how the decks were, like, all, like, pre-made things, too. Thank you again for all your help, darling. No, but I like okay. how, like, in war game, like, you... Remember European Escalation, where, like, you'd unlock, get experience, and ha could only unlock, like, one unit at a time? And, like, you built your decks from the ones you unlocked, and it was, like, so awesome to get, like, a new tank or something, you know, and put it in your deck. I missed that whole aspect of European Escalation. That was fucking amazing. I might actually reinstall European Escalation at some point when it was like more simple and straightforward. That was fun, man. I put a lot of time into that first one. How does Super Seducer have an 83% fucking rating? <laughs> Told you, it's a comedy genius. I think it's just people trying to piss off the social justice warriors boating it up, you know? Is Britain, I mean, not Britain, England, like, very populated as far as, like, people per kilometer or whatever? Like, are there still, like, wild parts with that aren't thickly settled, or are, yeah, like, people yeah. permeated the whole thing? It could be wild parts, too. Like, can you still move out to the country where it's, like, old school and not much around? Or is it all, like, a giant suburb by now? So parts you can know. Get lost in you know. There's this area I want to move to once I have the money. Like, First mistake? It's called Rochester. It's near the two major highways in Southern Mass. But it's like wicked backcountry woods, like one house every couple miles, just thick forest, you know, in the middle of nowhere, no big stores or chains, or, yeah, yeah. you know, McDonald's, no scumbags, no heroin, like, it's just woods. I want to move there. But it's like still like within an easy drive to civilization everywhere, you know. 
That's where I want to be. I want to be like detached and in my own little nook in the woods, but still near civilization. All right, man, I gotta get sleep. I gotta be up in a few hours. Okay. Uh, after my daughter goes to bed tomorrow, I'll probably be on for a little bit. Maybe I'll see you. I'll stop in. Have a good... What is it, 6.30 there? Yeah, nearly. All right, well, have a good morning. I'll see you later. User disconnected from your channel. Heads up. Hmm? Looking for something specific?
piece. I can carry something if you need me to. Yeah, stay gone. Huh? 